Welcome back to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker, the weekly radio show that informs and educates you on how to buy or sell real estate with Barb Schlinker, the owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. Now, Barb, we're hearing a lot in the news about this National Association of Realtors lawsuit settlement for price fixing and antitrust violations. That's a mouthful, but it's really important. And the new settlement goes into effect next week. How will that impact the real estate commissions going forward? Well, Richard, this all came about, it actually started about 10 years ago, and it's taken all that time to work its way through the courts, where basically some sellers got together and said, wait a minute, I'm paying all of the commission, and then half of that commission is going to the buyer or the buyer's agent that's working against me in the transaction." What do I mean by that, right? I mean, like the the offer comes in at less than asking price or the offer comes in and asks the seller to pay 15,000 of their loan closing cost. Or when they do an inspection, they insist on getting stuff on threat of termination. Uh, I recently just had one where um, it took a while to close because we were getting having a septic repair done. And even though the seller had gotten way ahead of this and started it even before we went on the market, um, the agent found a way to blame the seller for a closing delay, which really, um, it was totally out of his control, waiting for county permits and stuff like that. But uh, it wasn't that much of a delay. And he had told me up front, this buyer's buying this house no matter what. Well, all of a sudden, we get an email from the lender going, oh, your interest rate's about to expire. And to extend it, that's going to cost another twenty five dollars to $3,000. And so right away, I get an email from the buyer's agent going, it's your fault that you delayed this deal. And therefore, if the seller doesn't give us an extra $3,000, we're terminating. <laughs> And guess what my seller did? What'd they say, Richard? What do you think? Uh, terminating, I guess, or what? Or just move on. No problem. Yeah. They said, okay, bye-bye. Yes. Have a nice day. You know, they didn't care. They had a paid for house. They were good to go. And it, it was just a ploy. And, and I, I thought about it. And I looked back on the email from the lender and I called her. I said, wait, why are you saying it's going to cost money to extend a interest rate lock when from the time you locked to now, the interest rates have gone down by at least a half a percent. Why would you do that? You just get a new rate that's even lower. And she didn't have an answer for me. And I actually asked the title closer. She goes, you know, I think she made more money by extending that rate lock. And it, it's just, it's despicable to me. Some of the stuff that people do just to get money. <laughs> and um, anyway, it, it ended up that, you know, the, the lender said, oh, maybe cooler heads should prevail as if my head was not cool, right? Because the seller said, fine, punt, I'll see you later, have a nice day. And that's not what they wanted. They were just trying to extort money out of the seller with, a, with some faulty excuse. So that's the kind of behavior that commonly goes on. I mean, I have weekly stories like this. You, you can't make this stuff up. And so, um, you know, that's kind of how these lawsuits sort of took traction and these sellers started winning and there was more and more and more of them. There was one that was going to go on right, right here in the Colorado area where these lawyers are sending postcards to people that sold a home and said, hey, do you want to get the commission back that you paid to a buyer's agent? Join our class action lawsuit. And they knew they were going to win. So ultimately, the National Association of Realtors settled the case for a huge amount of money, $418 million, which they do have um, because it's the biggest trade organization in the country. And um, th there were two conditions of the settlement. And, and the effect of it was it stopped this long, uh, continual lawsuit thing that was going on state by state from growing. And um, the reason, part of the reason why it came about is there were some real estate brokerages had it actually embedded into their training documentation that they told the agents if they didn't offer so much commission as to the buyer's agent, 
the buyer's agents would boycott those homes and not show those homes. And even to just a few weeks ago, I know that was going on because I took over a listing where that former agent was offering like 1%, whereas the market norm is two, two and a half or higher. And nobody was nobody was looking at it, even though it was priced right. So I think it does go on. It's it's all about for the money for some of these agents. They're very transactional. And the truth is, there are, there are over fifty four hundred licensed real estate agents just in the Pike Speak region, and seventy percent of them don't sell a home at all, right? In a year, it's pathetic. And a lot of these big box brokerages, the average number of sales per year are less than four. So if you think about how much money that translates to maybe forty-five to $60,000, and, and then you got to pay taxes on it, it's not a huge uh, you know, living for some of these people. And so they do crazy things to try to, quote, represent their client. So as a result, the changes effective August 17th are going to be that um, no longer can... Uh, the amount of commission offered be published pretty much anywhere. We can't put it in the MLS. I don't even think we can put it in showing time right now, right? So that's the, that's an app that's owned by Zillow that you can easily set showings. And a lot of agents don't even read the MLS anymore. They just read the app, <laughs> which is pathetic. So um, I think I think what's going to happen is it's going to force the agents to actually have to prove to the buyers what they do for their fee. And they're also required to get a written agreement with the buyer about how they're going to get paid if the buyer does buy the house. And it's really confusing. Like when I tried to explain this to my brother that, you know, he owns one house, he doesn't really focus on real estate. He asked me, he's like, so do I have to pay to look at a house? And I'm like, no, <laughs> but you would, you might have to pay the buyer's agent if you have a buyer's agent represent you in the sale. And so um, it's going to be really interesting to see this because I don't believe the industry is very good at training real estate agents how to, A, articulate their value and how to set, collect, and negotiate their fee. They just don't teach them that. And they're trying. I've noticed with some of the contracts really in the past couple of months, all of a sudden we're seeing how much commission the buyer's agent should be paid, uh, put into the contracts, even though it's supposed to be a contract between the buyer and the seller. And and Richard, you probably know this from, you know, what contract law that you studied, that if the, the contracts between the buyer and the seller, you can't inject some third party into it, correct? That is correct. I mean, you've got a contract between two entities. If you want to change that, you need to make a, a different contract between all of the parties or an endum, something like that. But you just can't interject somebody into a, a contract between a couple of people. Right. So that's been the rules in the state for a long time. And so now they're going to have to find a way to position it, to word it so that they get paid. In other words, the seller to pay my agent so much to close. It's going to have to be worded in a different way so they don't put themselves in the middle of the transaction. And, you know, it, it it's going to be really, really interesting to see how it all shakes out. I think there'll be a lot of people that will get out of the business, um, it, to be honest. And, you know, the sellers were getting sued um, it, it, just because they were basically, um, or, or these brokerages were getting sued because they were forced to pay whatever was in the offered through the MLS system. And I've been threatened before. I had recently, uh, I had a sale a couple months ago down in Fountain where the, the agreed upon price was 405. The buyer mm -hmm. requested to go up in price by $10,000 because they were a first time home buyer and they wanted to use that excess cash in order to pay down their interest rate and get a lower house payment, which I totally understand that. So the seller goes, well, I don't want to pay a commission on the $10,000. That seems like a waste of money. And it, it's about $600. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I agree with you on that. I'll waive my fee for that. So I tried to put it in the contract where the buyer's agent would waive his percentage of it. And he had an absolute meltdown. 
I mean, it was, we're talking, we were arguing over $200. He goes, you're going to lose. I'm going to take you to arbitration. You have to pay what's published in the MLS. So the way this whole thing was set up through the National Association of Realtors, it made whatever commission was offered 100% non-negotiable. And that's a problem, you know, because everything's negotiable, right? And so the bottom line is going forward, if a buyer wants to see a house, they have to have a written agreement with the agent that's showing them the home. And it's going to talk about how they get paid. Now, Zillow has actually gotten ahead of this for their Zillow premier agents. They created this form in like 24 of the 50 states, not our state yet, but it basically says, I looked at one, it just says, well, you know, if you do buy this house, we're going to have to sign an agreement that, that how you pay my fee, right? So it kind of starts the conversation, but it also creates a problem in that, you know, what a buyer's agent should be doing is meeting with the buyer and find out what they're looking for and make sure they're qualified. That's what the seller expects, but the seller's not getting it. They're getting buyer's agents that are meeting the buyer at the door. They don't know if these buyers can buy a couch on Craigslist. And they've, you know, got kids and dogs and got all this preparation done to present their house. And then the feedback is, oh, well, I wanted a two-story. I wanted a ranch just because they never asked. So I think it's going to weed out the bad people in the business. And I think that's absolutely a good thing. My name is Barb Schlinker. I'm the broker owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. And I'm also the host of this show, Your Real Estate Voice. So if you are thinking of making a move, give us a call at 719-301-3900. Or you can go to barbhasthebuyers.com. Richard? Barb, it is your favorite time of the show. Mine too, for that matter. You've got some hot new listings. Tell us about them. As always, I have a beautiful patio home in Briargate, right close to Chapel Hills Mall. Fabulous location at 8149 Regiment Court, priced in the mid sixes. Uh, fabulous home out on Powers Road on 35 acres with a detached garage. Fantastic um, townhome in Briargate on Smoke Tree. A beautiful two story with a finished basement down in Fountain on Crandall. Uh, and a couple, uh, one really great hobby farm on a Cowie Way at 649999 also a beautiful uh ranch style home on five heavily treed acres fully fenced with an amazing detached RV garage and then one of my colleagues has a beautiful home with views on McPherson Road priced at 1.5 million and we have one fantastic lot up on um South Mountain Estates Road, priced at 85 and it includes a well. So if you are thinking of making a move, give us a call at 719-301-3900. Or if you want multiple cash offers or a guaranteed price, give us a call at 719-301-3900. Richard? You've been listening to Your Real Estate Voice. It airs every Saturday from 11 o'clock until noon, right after Cudlow. If you're thinking of making a move, call Barb at 719-301-3900, or as always, visit barbhasthebuyers.com. That'll do it for this week. Have a great week, Barb. Great talking with you. Great information. Thank you. Have a great week as well.